Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending May the 28th, 2021. Wow, what a spectacular end to the Q1 earnings seasons and back into the bull rally for equities. Hey, uh, it's, it's great. So we've been talking about equities for months on months now as we've uh, gone through the pandemic and re-emerging from the pandemic to the um, largely, uh, only casually mentioning the bond markets, wherein lies much of the information that informs us about the equities markets. We all trade the markets as they present themselves to us and as we present the, uh, ourselves to them, or that's the way it should be in my view. No one knows what's really going to happen, but there's a lot of information that presents itself through analysis of the bond markets that informs us about equities. And I thought I would take a few moments this week to try to explore the bond markets, the fixed income trade, uh, because I got peppered with uh, questions about that over the last couple of weeks. So let's get into it. Okay, taking a look at the bonds, uh, fixed income trade, then let's focus today on municipals because that removes the noise of at least the federal tax bracket out of it. Municipals aren't taxed at the uh, federal rate, they're taxed at the state and local uh, rate, however, and they can impact your ability uh, to get uh, taxed on your Social Security income. Um, but anyway, that's where we'll start out. I'm trying to minimize the noise and trying to focus primarily on, on principal interest and time of investment as we go through and analyze these things. Bonds can be a little bit tricky because they're a, a little bit... Uh, more difficult to understand than, than stocks because they kind of work in reverse. Let me just tell you that today's study on bonds, our analysis is brought to you by our qualified plan confidence program, which provides you customized advice for your employer-based 401k plan, your qualified plans at work. So it, it, we have the technology to allow us to custom fit uh, uh, your your uh, decisions on what to make on the new money that you're putting into the plan monthly and what to do with the existing allocations that you've had uh, and that's enough delivered to you on the first business day of every month for the price of less than a couple of Starbucks uh, a month uh, for your uh, average uh, plan is around $25 a month uh, up to 250000 in the uh, 401k balance. So uh, anyway, we custom fit it to you. It's a monthly subscription. Uh, people love it. Saves them thousands on market downturns, earns them thousands on on, on rallies, and, and and lets them sleep easier at night because they know what to do with their investment. Touch base with me, let you know how to get into that. So, the bond markets now. Let's let's work from the aspect that a bond sells at a face value. You buy a bond, say for a thousand dollars, or say for a hundred per per one hundred uh, is how the quotes are a lot of times. So. Let's say that you're you're at an even number there of 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 a thousand dollars, and that's that's what it's going to return to you. So it's a promise to return to you the one thousand dollar face amount at a certain period in time down the road, generally thirty years for a long term bond. Uh, say that it's uh, per one hundred on ten years, so they're going to give you back a uh, you know one hundred on on on. Uh, the money at, at the expiration of the term. And, the, and there's a coupon rate associated with uh, that, and that's going to be the interest rate that the bond is going to pay. So let's say you know, at $1,000, uh, if the coupon is five, then I'm going to pay a price uh, to buy that promise to return my one th uh, to return one thousand dollars to me, and along at, at, at the end of the term, and along the way, they're going to pay me a five percent coupon. Uh, so roughly, you know, five percent of a of a thousand dollars. So that's going to be, you know, uh, that that's how that works out. Fifty dollars a year until they give me back at the end my one thousand dollars. So how do you value? How do you, the the price of that bond uh, in the secondary markets? How do you know how much that you want to pay for that? Well. It depends upon what the prevailing interest rates because that's what you're going to compare to. So we start with risk-free and you look at the near term and you see here, this is two charts. The one on the right is the S&P 500. That's the general market index. The S&P 500 is the uh, benchmark for the stock markets and, and it's because it takes the biggest capped 
uh, 500 biggest cap firms uh, in the market, and, and, and this is an average of their performance. So that's how we gauge. So the market on the rights have been steadily increasing here since 2009. And then the chart on the left is a, the yield curves for federal uh, uh, debt instruments. So on the on the short end of this, the the short term, the three month to to, to two year, those are T bills, and so those have been basically bought down to zero percent uh, yield. And then the midterm you see jumps up uh, to uh, not so much federal uh, inter interference there, but has jumped up probably halfway, so say roughly that's that's around 1%. And then the long-term, 20 to 30 years down the road, they're yielding 2.3%. So this is the federal yield curve, and it's against this risk-free type of interest rate that we compare our other uh, securities to to see how much uh, we should be justified in paying for them, whether it's a stock equity a stock market or if it's a bond in the bond markets and the fixed income play. So the thing about fixed income is that it's just that. You're going to get that that yield, that percentage coupon rate until you until the end of the term. And then you just get the face value of the bond back. So that's why you have to be careful what you pay for it. And that's why it's fixed income. And the value uh, because of that stated coupon rate is going to fluctuate over time because of these other yields. So, let's take a look back historically at the uh, at, at, at the at these uh, yields, okay, from the federal government. So, the thirty yield the thirty year yields are now the lowest that they've been since the Korean conflict. And you would only have to go back four more years at the end of World War II. That's how low these yields are uh, right now. Uh, there was a lot of risk. People were buying bonds. Okay, so the money was flowing in, and um, and they were just wanting a return. So very low, very low yields, just for the promise of giving them back uh, their money uh, at the end of the term. Then the medium term, the the uh, 10 years, uh, the lowest ever uh, since they started recording these back around 1960, 62. Uh, 2012 was the lowest ever. We matched that earlier. We're a little bit higher than that right now, but basically the same as we were in 2012, the lowest ever on the midterms. The short terms, the three month uh, T bills, you have to go back to uh, World War, the beginning of World War II to find any lower yields than what we are. That was were very risky times, right? Risky environments and money was flowing in as a safe haven investment. And that's that's why I was getting peppered with questions as to what's the safe haven right now. So if you think the stock markets are gonna tank, Wally, wouldn't it be great place to be to be in, in, um, in bonds, okay? And so uh, I said, well, okay, let's let's look because inflation is going to be a, a factor here as well. Because if you're on fixed income, if you're going to be getting back a stated uh, interest rate, and then you're going to get back a, a face amount at the end of the day, are you buying it with dollars that have greater purchasing power that day than you than and, and getting repaid with dollars that are have fewer value, less purchasing power at the end of the term and along the way. So that's a that's a, a slowly deteriorating game, right? That's no good. So we got to look at inflation. So there's these things that the Fed sells called TIPS, uh, Treasury Inflation Protected uh, Securities. And so TIPS right now inform us as to the break-even inflation rate. So the Fed says right now, currently this week, these are the implied break-even inflation rates. So this is the rate of expected inflation. You saw you saw tantrums in the markets over the last several weeks because the actual inflation that we saw that we experienced, the unexpected inflation rate, was about almost twice these. Okay, and in some cases even higher. And you had this little thing, oil pipeline disruptions, all that kind of thing, shaking things up. So. Those, this is the kind of information that the bond market has available to us that allows us to be informed, inform our decision as to stocks, bonds, 
uh, other securities and where we want to be. So this is all viable information. So then let's apply some of that. That's the macro level. Let's then go down to uh, a, a micro level. So let's go down to a basket of municipal bonds that is our owned in a fund. And I just picked this at random, non-promotional. I'm not attacking it either. It's just an example that I picked out of Morningstar uh, of, a, of a, a mutual fund that I, I know a little bit about, uh, HYMAX. Uh, this fund has an expense of almost 1%. Let's just for easy math here on the fly, let's just call it 1%. It's 0.77, but I'll call it 1%. It's got a trailing 12-month yield of 3.3. So what are you netting out of that? If it's if it's 1%, well, you got about about 2.3% uh, that's that's net for you. And the effective duration on this is 8.28 8 years. So we're right in that midterm range, okay, for that 10-year yield to be impacting us. Now that's informing us of that. And look at the bottom what this Morningstar analyst has to say. So the lead for this is this strategy has a big appetite for risk. So don't just think because you're getting into municipals that you're divulging yourself of risk, less risk than the stock market. Not really so. Not really so. So if we're getting a total year-to-date return right now of 3.89%, and remember we're paying about 1% in this, uh, so that's 2.89. And remember the break-even inflation I just showed you a minute ago was, what, 2.5, say. So if we're at 2.9 and inflation's 2.5, we're getting 0.4 effective real real term yield. Wow. Okay. So how much of that can you stomach, right? Okay. So that's how that goes. Now that's the trailing returns on this 3.89 uh, year to date. Let's take another dive on that and see. Okay, is that price appreciation because the bond market used to be in a bull rally uh, and, and is momentum plays. And, that, and that's just what, what they were doing. They were playing that uh, momentum plays. Uh, that ended really uh, just at the start of the pandemic and, and, and things got so crazy there as it rolled through the year, people were still playing this in momentum play, but uh, seems to have settled off uh, uh, lately, okay, over the last several months. Anyway, if we look at distributions here, you're looking at 3.35 cents on net asset value of $12.83. That's around uh, not very good, okay? That's around like zero point nothing as well. It's around 0.2% of this is coming off the coupon, off the, off the distribution. So where's the money coming from? The momentum play, the price appreciation. How long can that game continue in a rising rate environment? Because think about it, if yields are, 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 are rising, if, if risk-free is rising, if interest, if we're in a rising rate environment, you're going to pay less, increasingly less and less and less for those bonds. And I just showed you that the majority of that uh, yield, that, that profit on the, uh, the return on those bonds was all based on price movement. Yields don't have much room to go further. The midterm were, uh, they only had about 1% to go to zero. Near term, the bills are already at zero, okay? Lowest since uh, World War II, Korean conflict. Midterm, lowest since the 1960s. So just uh, right, right after Korea, right before, right in between uh, Korea and Vietnam. That's where they're at. Uh, and and uh, so then you, you only have more greater probability of rates rising. Well, if rates are rising, and, and then the price of those bonds have to be going down. Either that or you're rolling them over, very high turnover in those bonds. Uh, that's a risky proposition. Just it should be obvious to you why. Um, and so you are you getting any kind of real return for the risk that you amount of risk that you're actually undertaking on those on those midterm municipals in that fund. Yeah. Not does it doesn't seem so, right? Because the bond prices continue to fall. That means your total year the, the, the total year yield yearly is going to have to start coming from the distributions that becomes increasingly less attractive to me. All right, let's move over to this um, individual 
individual 30-year bond that I pulled, a municipal bond, random, not promoting anybody, not attacking anybody, just random pulled it out here. And, and it was a recent trade that happened on May the 20th, okay? This issue, this bonds were issued on 2014. 30 years, they mature on 2044. They were they pay a coupon of 5% per year. Half of that is paid every May the 15th. Half of that is paid every November the 15th. So when this trade went down then, based upon the day that they purchased the, that, that bond, the yield then is, was calculated at 1.83% for this year. So that's its current yield because the price that they paid was a premium. Per $100 is what you get back. So the face is $100, all right? What you paid them was a premium. They paid $110.6, just shy of 63 cents, per $100 worth of bond, face value of bonds, okay? So they paid a premium of $10.625 cents per $100 face value of bond. You're paying a premium. That premium over time is going to get eaten up, right? Because what happens on, on November the 15th, 2044, is they're going to pay you back $100. You paid $110 for the privilege of getting that 5% coupon for the next 23 years. So 5% on $100 is what? <laughs> Yield to maturity, uh, the, the 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 stated yield right now is just is just based on what the what the value is today uh, at the time the trade was made. The yield to maturity then uh, takes into in, into consideration the time value of money. So it says that your yield to maturity on that is four point three percent, say, over the twenty three years remaining. Wow, three yeah. So that's what you get. All right. If I take another investment and say, now, given that's a tax-free, and, and, and what I'm about to say doesn't include tax-free, but even discounted that, if I take the same uh, money and invest it in at something that's 5% over the same time period, I get almost $547 for the same $100 investment. Even if you took off uh, a... a uh, you know, 25%, 20% of that, you know, you still have $400. So it moves from five and a half to four, even at a very high tax rate. I'm still saying that the opportunity cost based against this type of investment and the risk that's involved in a rising rate environment, let me be, let me be uh, in, in, in an alternative to this. So, Let's just use some what if scenarios. Let's see if if, if right, rising rates change, what it what it does to the yield to maturity. So we can take a look at seven percent. Uh, the last time that uh, we had inflation of more than four percent was uh, nineteen, you know, ninety nine, nineteen ninety, uh, two thousand seven. Those are the last times. So those yields were four and a quarter, seven percent far higher than they were today. So what happens if we change those? Well, our current yield to maturity was 4.278 at a price of 110.625, okay? So that means per $100, we paid 110.625. You buy $100,000 worth on the secondary market. So that's 110,625. If the yields go down to 2014 level, 3.67. Now you've made some handsome uh, money there. You've made $10,189 because the yields fell from the yield to maturity fell from 427 to 367. But if you have an increase in, 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 in interest rates, okay, if you go up to 526, now all of a sudden you're paying a discount here. $14,000 costs you money. Your bond is now only worth ninety six thousand five hundred, and you paid one hundred and ten thousand six hundred. So, if, if 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 rates continue to rise, the price continues to go down. So, in order to get the yield to maturity that you need, 
you're you're only going to be willing to pay seventy seven thousand dollars for what you paid one hundred and ten thousand dollars for. My point is that are you willing to tie up one hundred and ten now, almost one hundred and eleven, and wait twenty three years just to just to get a four percent return? over that 23 years and get a hundred thousand back. Are you willing to pay a hundred, almost an $11,000, $111,000 to get a hundred thousand dollars back 23 years in the future, just so you can get a pittance of coupon along the way. And at the end of the day, you got a four and a third percent uh, uh, yield to maturity. I'm telling you that I believe that there are alternatives available out there that we can go to um, that will long-term provide us better return. And, and, and look at that. I said, I said that you ended up, you know, with 4% return yield to maturity. And if you're thinking that inflation is going to be north, even if it stays around two and a half, then you only have one and a half percent real yield. If it goes to uh, higher, if it goes, stays above 4%, which was the assumption under some of those scenarios, then your effective, your real return is nothing because you're getting paid back dollars with much less purchasing power in the future. So in my view, you have to look more uh, at preservation of principle, but then also a, a growth that is geared towards, if you're in a rising rate environment, what kind of returns that we can get in, in inflation equities are the way to do that or some derivative thereof are the way to continue to get returns that will outpace inflation. That's where we seem to be right now. Um, past performance, no guarantee of future results, but the current alternatives that we have to straight up bonds uh, are, are appearing much better uh, in terms of real returns max matched against inflation and matched against the bond markets because look again you have to outpace inflation in order to have a real return and you have to be able to sell something at the end of the day that has increased in value over more than what you paid for it so that that total return is measured back to you as a profit in real dollars that make a difference to you so i'll leave you with those thoughts that's why i believe that probably we're better off with bond alternatives than we are going straight up into bond markets. Uh, like and subscribe. Jimmy Kimmel tells me every time you subscribe, you lose uh, a uh, an enemy. So, so be sure and subscribe. Everybody needs fewer enemies. And if you don't like, you'll hurt my feelings because I like to share my passion for this kind of stuff with as many people as possible. I love uh, what I do and I love the financial services uh, analysis and, and uh say with that it's been a great week have enjoy your holiday weekend it's gonna be a short week next week but it's gonna be a good week and the bull market will continue i'll see you next time